Drilling down on housing, the current rate on a fixed 30-year mortgage sitting at 7.3%. Two years ago, that number was 3.03%. To talk about what those rate rises mean, let's bring in Ted Rossman, Senior Industry Analyst at Bankrate. Ted, welcome. Good to have you with us. So that jump from 3% to above 7%, what does it do uh, to purchasing power for a home buyer? How much does it cut it? It cuts your purchasing power by about 40%. So in other wow. words, if you could afford a $375,000 house at 3%, now with rates over seven, you're probably looking at something like a $225,000 house. And there aren't that many of those. That's another key point is that low inventory plus high rates, we're talking high prices, high rates. It's a tough situation. So it's a tough situation. So I, I guess if I were in the market to buy, what I would be doing if I were faced with that dilemma would be looking at adjustable rate mortgages where I can at least buy some time at a lower rate and maybe get into that $375,000 house, even though I would not have the certainty of a 30-year fix. Is that what hap what's happening? Some people are talking about dating the rate and marrying the house, as in you're betting on refinancing down the road. I still think, though, that the 30-year fixed is the best gauge of affordability. I mean, it may not always be the best product for everybody, but it's just a slippery slope. You know, if you're betting mm -hmm. on refinancing and what if that doesn't work out for one reason or another? Rates don't move as expected or you lose your job or you have to move and sell the house. I, I think there's some risk here. Another thing we're seeing is that home builders and sellers are sometimes offering incentives like rate buy downs, for example, to cushion the blow for buyers. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Ted, we've been focusing on the impact to the housing market. The auto market is a little bit different, but it's still massive. I think the second biggest in terms of outstanding debt, and we're seeing many more cracks there already than we are on the housing side of it. What's going on with autos? Subprime auto delinquencies are actually worse now than they were during the Great Recession. And I think wow. that speaks to the impact of higher prices. The average new car price is approaching $50,000. For a lot of people, that means a monthly payment around 800 bucks. And with people getting squeezed by inflation in other areas of their lives, not to mention car-related categories like car insurance, which is way up, gas prices have started to tick up. This is why people are falling behind. It's tough to swing that $800 a month payment. Wow. Can I come back to housing for just a second, Ted, and ask a question? I remember a time, which shows my age, when mortgages, fixed mortgages, were often assumable uh, by, by, the, by, the next, by the person who's buying the house. Mm. Why is that no longer the case? Did the banking business just decide, hey, this is a bad deal for us, we're not going to let people assume mortgages? It's actually prohibited on conventional federally backed mortgages. It is allowed in some isolated instances with certain FHA loans and VA loans, but we're talking about a much smaller slice of the market. It would be nice though, to take over somebody's three or 4% yes. rate, because that's a key point. 80% of current homeowners have a mortgage rate below 5%. That's why people don't wanna move or trade up right now because that 3 or 4% rate is going to become 7 or 8. Well, Tyler, you should head out to, there is a company called Rome, R-O-A-M, that was just profiled in the Wall Street Journal that's trying to get uh, the ability for people to do just to, to, that. To do that, to, to assume trans mortgages. Assumable interesting, mortgages. Interesting, interesting. It's a rather antique thought, but uh, there it is. I think they're joining us on the show tomorrow, in fact. Thank you, guys. Wow. Appreciate that. Cool.